years at Ole Miss and then, what, 13 years with the, the Jets? I never got a solid lick on him in the 13, 14 years. <laughs> and he loved to blitz around me. But he was a, a great athlete. And, of course, he went to Ole Miss. And I went to LSU with Coach Dietzel. And I'll never forget, I'd been there the second day. And we'd done our physical and we'd done it. And I was going to get my shoes and everything, get ready to get dressed. Coach, you'll remember this, I'm sure. And uh, Mr. Bookman, our athletic equipment manager, handed me the worst looking pair of football shoes I've ever seen. <laughs> and I looked at him and I placed him gently back on the desk where they bounced and hit him in the chest. <laughs> Went in the trunk of my car and dug out my old high school shoes. Well, the next day, instead of going to get my role, Mr. Bookman proudly announced, I need to go down and talk to Coach Dietzel. I've been there two days now. So I went down and he didn't chew my butt out. He chewed around it and let it fall out. <laughs> And I sat there and I took it. And finally he says, do you have anything to say? Yes, sir, I do. What is it? Now he's getting aggravated now. I said, coach, in my mama's house, you promised me that you'd run a first class operation. And we believed you. I said, coach, I've been poor all my life and I've never worn anybody else's shoes. Next day I went there, and there was Mr. Bookman. Very reluctantly handed me a beautiful pair of shoes. <laughs> Brand new. Two weeks later, the whole freshman squad had new shoes. And from there on, we had a first class operation. Never said another word to me about it. And our whole stay together was never mentioned. I didn't mention it for 50 years. And we're telling stories at Angola, where I work now, our maximum security prison. And I'm telling them about the shoe incident. And one of my doctors was Dr. Red Kozan, would have been a sophomore that year. And he grabbed his pencil and he threw it down. That's the reason we didn't get any new shoes that year. <laughs> we had some other differences, Coach Diesel and I, along the way. But we could always work them out because we had a very common goal. And we played the old Miss freshman. I'll never forget that. We, we had freshman teams then, and you played three games. And we played... Mississippi State, Ole Miss, and Tulane. That was our season. And we're out there doing nothing one day, and I looked at Coach Pop Strange, and I said, man, this is a waste of time. He said, come here, boy, let me talk to you. He said, let me tell you something. And I was easy to get along with. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best team that's ever been recruited in the history of this school. And we're not going to scrimmage the varsity. We're not going to be dummies. We're going to play three games. We're going to win them all. And when we go into the spring, we're all going in well, healthy, and ready to play. And I took him at his word, and he was correct. We had a great undefeated freshman year. And then we went to the varsity. And I'll never forget, I was playing with Jimmy Taylor in the backfield with me that year. What a great football player he was. He had made all conference, led the league in rushing the year before. And now he's got me back there with him. So the coaches with their wisdom, of course, would concentrate on both of us, right? No. They left me alone and they attacked Jimmy. Every Sunday we'd go down and get him at the training room. And Jimmy's in the water up to here beat up like a drum. I was over there, man, this Southeastern Conference ain't bad. <laughs> this is pretty good. I'd made a long run out of Texas Tech, caught a kickoff. After they uh, stopped it, 
10 seconds was off the game clock. I'd run 100 yards. I caught a pass and hurdled a guy, <coughs> scored, had a great night. Jimmy got beat to hell. Back in the whirlpool. And we came up, and I'll never forget, you guys might forget, but we won't. Played Ole Miss in Oxford. And Jimmy was our linebacker and fullback. And they said, well, we're going to get Jimmy. Well, they beat him up pretty good, and he gave him a hip pointer. But as tough as Jimmy was, he wouldn't leave the game. He missed two extra points because of the hip pointer. Well, finally, he can't take it anymore. They take him out. They put in our second string fullback, Bob DeCrosse. Do any of y'all remember Bob? Y'all don't remember me either, do you? <laughs> Bob weighed 160 pounds, 5'10". And, of course, Jimmy played linebacker in front of me. I was playing the safety. And I never had to worry about him coming after me because I knew Jimmy would hook him or they'd have to run over Jimmy to get to me. I had free run of the feet. And I got the cross in front of me. So I'm ready to watch for the sweep of the option. But I've also got an eye on this guy that played right guard for him. A guy named Gene Hickerson. <laughs> <laughs> well, first play, Hickerson hooks the cross to and his feet are about this high off the ground. <laughs> and Hickerson's looking around across the, at me. I said, this ain't going to be fun. This ain't going to be a good day. And we played, and we played well. We, we, uh, I caught what I thought was a, a one close enough to win the game. We ran a corner. And then they had one of those uh, phantom holding deals. Y'all know what a phantom holding deal is? <laughs> Fugler's backing up, and he reaches and touches his guard to see where he is because he's looking. And they called holding on us. Penalized 15 yards, took the 40-yard pass away, and we lost 14-12. But I think that day we served notice that we could play in the coming days. Uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. It was a great day, a beautiful day in Oxford. But we came up short. Uh, when Earl Turner, our quarterback, got hurt, uh, and it was a toss-up. Coach Diesel had a quarterback quandary beginning of the season. When Earl Turner or uh, MC Reynolds, thank you, Coach. Which one would it be? MC could throw the ball. When Earl fit the team that we had that year. So. He gave the starting job. He had made up his mind, the staff had made up their mind, that Warren Rapp was going to be the second team quarterback and that he was going to play in the first half of every game. And he did. So MC got mad and he quit. The next year, Winton Earl Turner is coaching in high school. Warren Rapp leads us to a perfect championship, perfect season. Where was MC Reynolds? Anybody know? Rookie of the year with the St. Louis Cardinals. <laughs> good, good quarterback too, Coach. We had some great years down there. Uh, of course, we played these guys every year, and then we played them again the year that, uh, and I like to say we made the run because I had a lot of help. Jake was the biggest help. <laughs> I want you all to know that when I broke out of whichever one of those bunches I was in and looked up, I looked him straight in the eye. And I said, I'm going to fake him. And I put a fantastic fake to the left. He didn't bite for it. He came straight for the juggler vein, and I ran through him. <laughs> Scored. Won the game after some other problems. <laughs> But I want you to know that he did miss that tackle. But in his career, his entire career at Ole Miss, that's the only tackle he missed. <laughs> they never got to him. <laughs>
Now we're going to start on the right-hand side here with the Ole Miss Rebels. And our first speaker is a native of Macomb who played left guard and lettered for the Rebels from 58 through 60, served as Ole Miss Athletic Director from 74 through 94, inducted the Ole Miss Athletic Hall of Fame in 1989, and the Mississippi Sports Hall of Fame in 2003. Would you please welcome with me, Warner Alford! Thank you very much. I knew they were wrong when they said the Chinese bandits stopped us when Warren Rev and Billy Cowan made the tackle there on fourth and one. They weren't only Chinese bandits. Uh, the one thing that has always been good about when somebody asked me, well, Warner, were you in the game when Billy Cannon made that run? And I can truthfully tell them, no, I was not in the game. But it kind of ends then. They never asked me, were you in the game when you all didn't score from the one? <laughs> I never had anybody ask me that. And I never did want them to. But it was an unusual situation because uh, after Billy scored, uh, we changed uh, teams, as Coach Vaught would do, and uh, our team went in to receive the kickoff, and then he told uh, Doug Elmore to go in with us, and Doug was about the fourth quarterback uh, behind uh, Bobby Ray and Jake and uh, Glenn Griffin. How Billy Brewer. And uh, so we kicked, they kicked off to us, and we caught the ball and started on the 30-yard line. Ten minutes to go. The reason I know that is because we went in and I looked up at the clock. It was ten minutes. We took the ball for ten minutes, drove it to inside the five. They were right. It was goal to go. And they did a great job stopping us and Doug Elmore got tackled on the one yard line. Billy and Warren Rabb uh, made the stop. So thank goodness. I'll tell you what, that, it'll haunt you thinking about that. Um, also, I know we have in that end zone, particularly, I thought it was something that they did in Louisiana to keep us out of that particular end zone because in 1972, we had a slow clock down there, and some of them <laughs> threw the ball in hand and beat us 17-16 uh, in that same end zone. <laughs> it's great to be with you all today, tonight, and uh, we can celebrate. It was a great football game, and I guess that's what it's all about, is that you were able to participate in a game like that and uh, can have the memories, whether they were bad or good, uh, I'm just glad to see that, that many of us still here since 50 years ago. Uh, Coach Diesel, I just want to say also uh, from an athletic director, when you you were in the administrative end of it, I thank you for what you and your staff would do at our national athletic directors meeting when you had the management institute and uh, you would go to a, in like a four-year period, and Coach Diesel and his staff every summer would put on a, about a three-day seminar. And I appreciate you helping us and helping this young athletic director with a lot of wisdom. Thank you.